Welcome to the beginning of HTML. This is HTML 101 and it is the first lesson on how to become a front-end web developer. My name is Michael and I will be your host, coach and guide. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to install Visual Studio Code and write your own very first web page. One of the things you require first is Visual Studio Code. The address is actually listed here, that's code.visualstudio.com. When you get here, there is a alert button that just shows up here. So that's one of your first tasks. You have several tasks in this um, lessons that will be pushing to you guys. And you guys should take note of those tasks as we are giving it out. One of your first tasks you're going to do this week is to download Visual Studio Code and make sure it's working on your laptop so that you can be practicing as we push out assignments for you guys to work on. Download Visual Studio Code by going to the website and install it. Installation process is fairly easy. So when you have that and you've installed it, in our Telegram group, we also have Visual Studio Topic where you will see all the things that we've talked about in terms of the things that you can do that will help you today. We're going to go through Visual Studio Code, the environment, and then actually create our first page because today's topic is to create our very first web page. That is the target of today. Then the following classes, we then start picking it up gradually, one after the other. You know, all the subtopics, we start looking at it. But today, you should be able to create your very first page. So we assume that you must have gone to download this and it's running on your system. Once you pop it up for the first time, you get to see something like this. In your own setup, it might look different, but most of the time it will come like this. This is like a blank template. You don't have anything done. The first thing you need to do is to first create a folder. That folder is like you're creating a project. You need to have all your files contained in a folder because the way web works is that there are a bunch of files that mix up a web page. So everything needs to be in a folder to properly organize your website. So we're going to start by saying open a folder here. There's a button here that says open folder. Yours might look different, but you need to be able to locate all this, you know, interface I'm talking about. You can go through file and then click on open to so start off by opening a folder. Once you go that, my system is a little bit different from yours, but you get the logic. It will take you to a place where you can have all the list of your folder. You can put it where it's more convenient for you. I'll just put it on my desktop. And I'll create a folder and I'll call it HTML. That's the name of my folder I want to use. And once I do that, it gets created. Then I open it. Once I open it, you can see that it's now on the top left side of the screen. That is where I'm going to put all my files that I want to work with. That's where it's going to stay. What are web pages? What is an HTML page? Because what's the big deal about HTML? HTML is a big deal. HTML is also like every other document that you are aware of. I'm sure you know that there are more than one kind of document on the computer. You have an Excel document, you have Microsoft document, you have a PDF, you have uh, what document again do you have? You have several documents in, in the computer, as the case may be. HTML is also a kind of document, but that document is viewable by a web browser. This is a browser. So this browser makes it possible for you to view a web page. Now, this page that we've just gone to, google.com, has been designed and hosted on the cloud so that when we type google.com, that file will be, will be placed for us here to see. This page we are looking at is actually a file and we can actually save it on our system. But we're not going to go into that detail. I just want to give you the idea of how a web page looks like. The fact that a web page is just simply a file, like a regular file that you have in the system. For people that are a little bit techy, you will know that file has extensions. We are seeing that the folder is there as what it is. I call it HTML. You can call yours anything. And the next thing we need to do is to create an HTML page. Remember I told you that web pages are just like every other files that you have on the internet. So if that is the case, it means to create one of these pages, you have to create it like every other file. We create let's say test.html. What makes HTML HTML is the fact that it has that extension .html. What makes Microsoft Word Microsoft Word is because it has the extension docx. The same thing with Excel. So the same thing with PDF document. PDF document has .pdf. 
even jpeg even other files have extensions extensions are ways to identify the kind of files that you are working with so in this case because we, are, we want to work with a web page we use what whatever name you want to call it and you put dot html immediately you put it as dot html you can now start writing html code so we're about to write our first web page now the first process of what you need to write is that you need to declare that this document is actually an html and how do you declare that is by using html tag so i just introduced one jargons to you guys now and that is called tag a web page contains several elements several elements so the first element that goes into your web page is the html tag so the html tag is most likely 95 percent of the time they are in ps so you have the starting tag and then you have the ending tag you can see that the start one starts with html and using this angle bracket open and close and notice how the closing tag looks like it has a forward slash you know denoting that you are closing the tag when you open a tag you must close it at the end so the purpose of this tag that we've just written is to tell the browser that this is an html document because the browser is also interesting that it can render any kind of file if you've noticed before when you are browsing a a web page sometimes it might display pdf you can actually view pdf documents on the web browser browsers have become so sophisticated that they can open other kind of contents so without mixing things together even though this file is an html document you are also telling it that what an html from the code that's what you are saying here now having said that we've been able to introduce two things here we've been able to introduce what we call tags and tags are elements that has start tags and end tag so this is called an element and it's called an html element so the first one here is called the open tag and this last one here is called a close tag and this is the very basic principle of html once you know this principle of html the rest thing will just be very easy for you to assimilate we're going to be writing open tag and close tag a lot so the next thing that we we'll need to follow is what the head tag immediately you close it you open it you close it and look at what happens so you have your starting of the head tag and then closing of the head tag one of the very important thing of using an integrated environment like this is that it even helps you to tell you what it is you are doing and it explains what is happening with those tags so for short head tag allows you to capture the title of the web page it puts everything that is non-visible to the user there those are places where you can put the description of the website where you can put the metadata of the website metadata in terms of who created the website who is the author of the website there are more information about the head section which is another class entirely within the head section the next thing you want to do is to provide it, the title tag just follow me here you can see the head tag it opens and then it closes here within it we have the title tag it opens and then it has its close relative after it and i will say my first page so what we've been able to do is to put a title to that the next thing you want to do is that you are done with the head declaration because the head is more of like the information about the the file you are creating the web page you just carry the information what about the content how do you now start designing you know beautiful websites that contains images that contains pictures that contains links those sections are added in the next thing i want to do those section is added here where it is called the body the body is very robust the body is where every other thing falls under but look at the structure again and look at it carefully we are dividing it into three sections the first section is a declaration that this is a document like it's an html document the second section declares the head part and the head part hold all the information about the the metadata like who, who created it who is the author what's the title what's the description of the website what is the icon on the website you know when you look at the website and you see the icon on it everything is declared on the head section then finally the body 
the body is what contains the major cocoa that you are looking at. Whenever you go to a website, what your eyes are looking at is what is in the body. So that is the body there. Let's go ahead and start adding something inside. We're just going to add one thing. Don't worry, guys. I'm not going to overload you today. I'm just going to add one thing. And that one thing is I'm not even going to introduce anything new again. I'm just going to say welcome to HTML 101. And that's all. We just successfully designed a web page. How do you test what you've done? Because if you go and meet someone, you say you're a you know, website designer, how do you show this to them to prove that you know what you're doing? So to make this view work on the browser section, you have to go and locate this file. Do you see this file here that is called test.html? You have to go and look for it. Remember, we save it on the desktop. So we browse through our desktop. And it can be anything on your own system. So we'll have it here and then you can see the file here. So you have to open it up in your browser so you can see what it has. So let's pick it one after the other. Look at the top section that says my first page. Can you see that? The part that says my first page. Do you see how it correlates with what we entered in the title? Right? That's what denotes that. So for example, if you go to google.com, you can see the Google thing there. It means they must have done the same thing that we did here. Then notice the Google icon. Of course, we are not going too deep because we are taking it gradually. So yours don't have an icon yet. It's gradually. Once you get to know how to do the icon thing, it will show. The next thing that we also did was the body. Look at what happened in the body. We said, welcome to HTML 101. But look at what Google did with their own body. They did quite a lot, right? They, they introduced um, images. They introduce um, search components, that's form component. They introduce links. And those are the things that we'll be going into in the next class to show you how to do. This is a kind of a form of an introduction to the class. And I will now be showing you other parts of Visual Studio Code. The main part of this class is to talk about the Visual Studio Code. If you are going to be a developer, this is going to be your home for a very long time, right? So you need to be able to you know understand the environments that you are dealing with and what are the tools that you need to get familiar with from the extreme left we have the explorer the explorer is what denotes where your files are in the system like the list of files that you are working with and the more files you have the more they will be displayed here in the part of the section so that you can have you know as i mentioned to you it's not just one file you will be working with you'll be working with many files if you've been to websites before, you will notice they have different pages. Those different pages, you know, are something that somebody has worked on. It means there are several web pages that makes up a website. So you will be having those lists of files here. And there are other resources that you will also be using. Like if you reference an image on a website now, you will put it here. You know, so you need to be able to locate where those files are. You have a section explorer, and that's why we created a folder. And the purpose of that folder is to put all our files for that project in the same place so that we can easily have them. The first link we are dealing with here is the file explorer. And that's the purpose. You can easily file or find all your files. And we have some small, small tools here that will help you to create folder because within your project, you can create folders to arrange what you are doing you know, over time. Uh, the next thing is to create more files. You can create more files as you wish. You, know, you can add more files here. You can create folders, as I've said. These are advanced for now, but I'm just showing you the tools. The next thing I want to show you is the extensions. The extensions are very crucial to making your life easy. The extensions make your life easy and make things fast for you. If you are installing this for the very first time, if you go to the community group, you will see Visual Studio Topic um, group that will show you all the extensions that we've recommend for you to download. But I'm going to look at one or two if I can easily pick it now. So I go to the extensions and it shows me list of extensions. You don't need to worry about all this story, but this is where you can search for extensions and install them. One of the extensions that we recommend is preview. More like live preview. What live preview does is that it allows you to see what we are doing live. Like this page we have now, I'm going to preview it live for you you need to first install the live preview extensions once you install the live preview extension look at how i got here i got here through extension button here and then you search for preview this one in particular is what we're installing 
I'll put the link in the video below so that you'll be able to locate it from your system. When you have this, you install. I have it installed. That's why it's saying disabled. I can uninstall it and you can, you can install as well. Once it's installed, you need to then use it. You can see the usability here is being used here, but I'm going to show you the usage because it's something you'll be using very well. To use it now, you just right click here and you click on show preview. So once you click on show preview, it gives you what you are doing. It allows you to, you know, see, oh, okay, this is what I'm doing. So what that means is even if you make changes on what you are working on now, those changes are happening. Those changes are happening as you are typing. That's the advantage of having extension. As I've said, it makes your life very easy. Another thing we want you guys to install is called Prettier. So Prettier is very important. I can overemphasize the use of Prettier. So I'm going to close this section now because you can close the preview you have here and then it gives you this pre, this full view. So Prettier makes your code, as the name suggests, makes your code pretty. Well, not really pretty in that way. It just makes it properly formatted. Now look at this code now. I'm sure it's appealing to you. I'm sure it's it's kind of a little bit readable. Uh, maybe because you are not used to programming yet. By the time you get used to programming, it will not be, you know, start making sense. If I didn't have Prettier, this is how this code would have looked like. It would have looked like this you know, which might be difficult for me to read, kind of. But having it with Prettier, immediately I say, if Prettier just do it like this for me and properly do what? Indent my code for me. This is what they call indentation. Indentation is a way for you to present your code in such a way that it's logical to read. I can say, okay, this HTML tag starts and ends here. You can see that it's, it's very easy for me to follow it with my eyes. And I can see my HTML is also starting here and it's ending here. This is also easy for me to follow with my eyes. And then I can say my title follow here and like that. This makes it very easy for you to read. The reason why I'm stressing this is because you read your code more than writing. You spend a lot of time reading your code than writing them. Because you write once and you review several times. You know, I tell people a lot, pay attention to how you start coding. Because just like driving, if you start driving with a very bad habit, it's going to get on with you when you become a professional. So it's very good for you to make sure that you put your code properly. And then when you are viewing it, it's very easy for you. First thing is to install Prettier. I'll put the link to that in the description below so that you can always navigate yourself throughout this. And this I said, it's not like it will stop you from coding. It will just make it easier for you and it will make it enjoyable for you. And that's why you have a coach. That's the reason why I'm here. Whatever you are doing, it should be easier. You shouldn't go through stress to make things work. Anything that will make your life easy, that's what I'm here for. I'm going to give you things that, you know, took a lot of people time to figure out. And I'm going to tell you how you can, you know, get them solved easily. You guys should go and install Visual Studio Code. After you install it, you create your very first page. And you can put anything that you want to put into it. Install the extension that I've showed you guys. I'm going to put the link of the extension in the description below on the video and you are good to go. Thank you for staying to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and turn on bell notification in order to be notified when we release new videos. See you in the next one.